Oh my God, the Turag just did that. Last time in the TFL Tough T video series, we proved that our 2004 Volkswagen Touareg could do some pretty moderate off-roading, and it could do it very well. But today we are taking up a notch, or seven, with our Touareg, and we're out here on the Ironclads Trail with a real off-roader, our 2004 Land Rover Discovery. Here we go up the ironclad. And this first part is a ground clearance test, which means in theory, we should have a big advantage in this Land Rover because it's lifted, I've got oversized tires, so I should be able just to slowly crawl my way up this. I do have a good old fashioned low range on this Land Rover, so this first obstacle should be a piece of cake. Now I have my center diff unlocked, I am in low range, but I may end up locking it here. Just letting the traction control system figure out what the best line is. Oh yeah, <laughs> no issues with ground clearance. You saw that Wrangler get caught up a little bit back there. Not the Land Rover. Yep, nice and slow. Yep, you're fine. Nice. Great job. Stage one in the Touareg. Now I have everything unlocked just like I did in the Landy, but I am in low range. And in terms of suspension height, I selected extra or X apostrophe TRA, which is 11.81 inches of ground clearance. I don't know how much the Land Rover has, but I suspect it's a little bit more, but almost 12 inches is more than a Wrangler Rubicon, which is pretty good. Now, this actually is a very different way of distributing torque where it needs to go because yes, it has traction control, but it also has auto diff locks, which feels like a much more effective way of doing it. It's a much more positive engagement. I'm gonna take it nice and slow. I don't have underbody protection, which really, really sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna crawl it, crawl it. I also have very minimal articulation, which I am quickly noticing, especially in its max suspension setting. This thing likes to lift tires. And lift tires a lot. Okay, so stage one there is complete. Now for the scary part, stage two. Even though both these vehicles are the same year, they have two completely different philosophies for off-roading. Cause the Discovery 2 here, well, it's about as old school as it gets. A ladder frame, solid axles, front and rear, and coil springs. This one has been made even better with a lift kit, these oversized Goodyear Wrangler tires, and of course, bumpers front and back with a recovery winch. I mean, this beast is prepped for off-roading, so, how can our 04 Mommy Mobile Volkswagen possibly keep up? Okay, yeah, so on the face of it, the Volkswagen looks pretty useless off-road. It's got a very street-oriented design, unibody construction, independent suspension all around, but what the Volkswagen brings to the table is technology, because they threw everything they had at this vehicle to make it go off-road. It's got four corner air suspension, which means in its max extra off-road height, I have nearly 12 inches of ground clearance. I have a center locking diff and a rear locking diff. I mean, Volkswagen went nuts to make this thing off-road worthy and also comfortable on the road. Second obstacle in the Land Rover now, this is gonna be much more difficult. It's really articulated, but it's also jagged and rocky. It's time to go low range, center diff locked. And now it's time to talk about the Landover philosophy in this era, about how to manage wheel spin. And it was all about traction control. So spinning wheels are stopped or braked to send power to the wheel with traction. And it works 
I think it works pretty well. You do have to stay in the throttle a little bit. So like there, getting a little bit of hopping. Stay in it, stay in it, figure it out, figure it out. Nicely done. Come on, grip. So traction control is trying, but it's not distributing enough power. So I'm gonna have to probably back it down a little bit and give it a bump. Come on, traction control, figure it out, there you go. There you go, okay, nice, nice. And then just crawl my way up this rocky section. Ooh, that is steep. Oh man, that's gonna be difficult in the Volkswagen. I think quite difficult, actually. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, time for the hard climb in the Touareg. Now, I did lock my sensor and my rear diff. So, I have an extra diff lock. Let's see what happens. I will say, right away, much more controlled than the Land Rover. Just creepy crawling my way up. Wheels are definitely in the air. Oh yeah. I'll take that. That feels pretty good. So not nearly as much articulation, but, oh, more control, I'd say. Okay, now I just gotta follow my way up through these rocks. That was impressive. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you don't expect it to do what it does, huh? So, this is gonna be a big test of ground clearance. Ho, ho, ho. So far, so good. Not hitting on anything, so I think we're gonna keep going. It's nice and creepy crawly. Taking it super slow. And I think we're through. Oh my God, the Touareg just did that. Holy crap, that was impressive. Speaking of old school, the Land Rover, well, it's pretty old school luxury in here. You've got these big leather captain's chairs, a very flat dash. You've got some wood across the middle there and a little bit on the side. It's very comfortable, it's very elegant, but it also feels very 80s. And that's because, for the most part, this general design is very late 1980s. And that's to say you've got a very basic cassette player here. You do have automatic climate, but the buttons are very Tonka toy-like. Now, the interior on that Land Rover feels very Duran Duran, which is to say late 80s. The interior on this Volkswagen feels very Kanye West, even 2010s actually, because this could be a new vehicle in here. I mean, we've got a real infotainment screen, and in terms of features, the Touareg blows the Land Rover out of the water. We have four zone automatic climate. We have four different heated seats, five position versus the one position in the Land Rover automatic headlights. We have modern gauges. I mean, it just goes on and on about what the Volkswagen has compared to the Land Rover, even though they were produced in the exact same year. Even the headlight technology is completely different. The Land Rover uses good old fashioned halogen bulbs, whereas the Touareg uses self-leveling projector beams. And while the Volkswagen's headlights may work better at night, it does demonstrate something pretty much across the entire vehicle. Because when the Land Rover bulbs failed, it was 25 bucks and 15 minutes and new ones were in. And that can be said throughout most of the entire vehicle. If we have a spring failure on the Land Rover, pull out a coil, stick in a new one. If we have an airbag failure on the Volkswagen, it's gonna be far more expensive and far more difficult. There's more examples of old school goodness inside the Land Rover as well. For example, to go in and out of low range, you've got a good old fashioned transfer case lever. And to engage the center diff lock, ugh, man stuff. Yeah, that's right. Now, there are some other old school goodies in here that maybe aren't so good. So let's do an airbag count in the Land Rover. Driver, passenger. Well, if you can count to two, I think you'll be fine. How about the Touareg? In the Volkswagen, engaging low range in diff locks could not be easier. There's actually a little knob here that goes to low range and then center diff lock. And the Volkswagen has a rear diff lock as well. But it is super easy and it is also 
really fast, faster than most modern vehicles. Airbag count in the Volkswagen. So one, two, three up here, four on the A pillars. How about the B pillars? Five, six, C pillars, seven, eight. So at least eight airbags in the Touareg, which is four times as many. Fast math right there. Stage three. First up, Land Rover. I love how confident the Land Rover is off-road. I mean, it feels super beefy, and I think part of that is down to the solid axles and the good old-fashioned coil spring. So it feels like I can take on this pretty difficult terrain without much difficulty. It just kind of claws its way up. I also like the engine, and it's not all that reliable, if I'm being honest. It's a 4.6 liter V8, Rover V8. This engine has been in production since 1961 started as a Buick engine and oh, come on, grip, grip, oh, a little bit of slippage there. But what I was saying is this engine is nice and torquey, but it goes through head gaskets every seven minutes or so. So uh, not so brilliant on that front, but on the plus side, it does haul this big old Land Rover up these hills with relative ease. Uh, one thing that isn't so good is the transmission. It's a four-speed automatic. Four. In 2004, it had a four-speed. So, oh, that's going to be hard on the Touareg, I think. Um, it's, it's a little bit primitive in that regards. And the traction control system, even though it works, it, it takes some time to activate. I really wish they had just gone with the good old-fashioned mechanic, mechanical locker like Volkswagen. The Discovery here has one very important piece of off-road tech, a full-size spare tire mounted on the swing gate, easy to get to, which is great because the inside is full of recovery gear, but this one also has the ARB twin air compressor, so it is onboard air for inflating tires and the like. Now, the Volkswagen doesn't have a full-size spare tire, which is a huge bummer when you're off-road, and the spare tire it does have is mounted underneath the rear end here. So if you were hauling stuff for recovery gear, you have to open up the rear end to get to the donut. But it does actually have factory onboard air because it has factory air suspension and Volkswagen handily gave you a hose to plug in to the system so you can inflate tires, which is really clever. Stage three in the Volkswagen. And I must say I am blown away by how this car has been doing off-road. Now, it does make some kind of worrying clunks and pings, uh, which I think has to do with the suspension almost topping out because there's just so much pressure in the bags. Um, and that's kind of part of the deal is, yes, I have a lot of ground clearance, but in its highest suspension mode, it's very firm and there's not a whole lot of articulation, but that doesn't really matter because I have those lockers and this thing, it's okay lifting wheels. It just simply compensates for it with the additional traction. I mean, I'm on street tires right now. I am on street, road going, normal tires on, you know, not the Rubicon Trail, but something that's fairly challenging. And I would say that this vehicle is absolutely killing it. It, it does like to get on three or two wheels a lot. Ooh, I think I ran out of tire there. I sure did. Locker is on. So let me bump it a little bit. I think it's time we start investing in a set of all-terrain or mud-terrain tires for this beast. So a little bit hung up there. Once again, I think that was more down to tires than the vehicle. What am I going to do here? 12 inches of ground clearance is a lot, but I still don't want to go scraping the rocker or more worryingly something important underneath it. So I'm going to be a little bit careful through here. Now this Volkswagen has a 4.2 liter V8, which is way more powerful than the Land Rover's, almost 100 more horsepower. And I have a six speed automatic, and I actually think the engine is probably more bulletproof than that Land Rover, if I'm being completely honest. You have to replace the timing belt, but that's about it. The rest of it is pretty solid. The transmission has more issues. Good, but you definitely lack a little bit of grip. Now, the front tip is actually doing a good job of locking up as well. I don't think it's a true locker. I think it's using 
you know, more of like a brake based system, but even still, pretty darn impressed on how it's performing. Still in extra height mode. In regular off-road mode, the suspension is more compliant, which is how you're supposed to drive around, but I want this additional height on some of these obstacles, so that's why I'm in extra mode. And I mean, it looks a little silly with it on its tippy toes, but dang, is it effective. So what did we learn out here on the Ironclads? Well, I gotta say, even with street tires, the Volkswagen Touareg is remarkably capable. And with a set of all terrains, I have no doubt actually, I think the stock Touareg could go places this Land Rover in its current setup just couldn't. And that's because you've got the locking differentials in the center and the rear, plus the air suspension. However, for regular off-road use, I would take the Land Rover. And that's because I trust its setup just a little bit more. I like having those good old fashioned coil springs and the solid axles. It just feels a little bit more robust out on the trail, even though I think that the Volkswagen could go more places in theory. Now let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one would you prefer? Our $4,600 Volkswagen or the $5,300 Land Rover? And be sure to go back to tflcar.com for more news views and real world off-roading reviews. Um, now it's just time to get this thing back under the road where you see most of them and maybe swap on a set of all-terrain tires.